Hume's system of space and time consists of two parts. The first follows this chain of reasoning. The mind's capacity is not infinite. Thus, neither our ideas of extension nor of duration contain an infinite number of parts or inferior ideas. Rather, they could only consist of a finite number of simple and invisible ideas. It is possible that our ideas of space and time are made up of indivisible, simple ideas. But it is not possible that our ideas of space and time are infinitely divisible. Hence, our ideas of space and time are certainly made up of a finite number of indivisible, simple ideas. The second part of Hume's systems follows from this first part. The smallest parts of our ideas for space and time are indivisible. If these indivisible parts had no content, then we could not conceive them. But we can conceive them. Thus, these indivisible parts are filled with something real and existent. Thus, every time we conceive of space or time, we must be conceiving of something that is in space or time. The ideas of space and time are therefore no separate or distinct ideas, but merely those of the manner and order in which objects exist. Or in other words, it is impossible to conceive either a vacuum and extension without matter, or a time when there was no succession or change in any real existence. Objections to Hume's indivisibility of space and time have been leveled against both parts of his system. And both parts are connected. Hume will begin by examining the objections against the finite divisibility of extension. The first objection that Hume addresses actually does more to prove the connection and dependence of the two parts of a system than it does succeed at counter-arguing either of them. Many argue that indivisible mathematical points are absurd. Because these points do not exist, we cannot conceive of extension being made up of them. Now, we know that we have impressions of objects as color and solidity. These impressions are made up of small, simple, indivisible impressions of color and solidity. Physical points are divisible, so the idea of physical points would be compound. They would be made up of simpler ideas, but our indivisible impressions are not made up of lesser ideas. So we do not have impressions of the objects as physical points. Rather, we have sense impressions of the objects indivisibly in extensive parts. These impressions must then be of the object's mathematical points. So Hume thinks that the infinite divisibility of matter is an absurd extreme position. He thinks the same for the argument that mathematical points are non-entities. There is a medium position between the two. When we regard the mathematical points as corresponding to simple impressions, then we neither regard matter as infinitely divisible nor mathematical points as non-entities. Now, extensions always have parts. Thus, physical points, which are extensions, must also have parts. These parts must be different from one another. And anything that is different, the mind can conceive separately. But, say we are conceiving of one physical point. It is different from another. But within this idea must be more ideas of simpler parts. But if every part has another part to infinity, then every time we conceive any physical part whatsoever, we are thereby conceiving its smaller parts together in the part they make up. Thus the mind could not possibly conceive all the subparts separate from each other. Hence, extension must instead have fundamental indivisible parts that we may conceive apart from each other. Hume then addresses a second objection to his theory of simple extensive parts as being mathematical points. If there is no extensive space between things, then their boundaries must overlap. And if there are spaces between indivisible things, then there are extensive parts between them. So if there are only indivisible atoms, there cannot be extensive spaces between them. Thus, if extension is made up of atoms, then their boundaries must overlap. That means the atoms must penetrate each other's space. For one thing to have both its own place and to penetrate another space requires that part of it to be in something else and part of it be in itself. But then the thing would have parts. Thus, such things would not be perfectly simple. Hence, because indivisible atoms would have to penetrate each other, they would not be indivisible. So extension, argue some, cannot be made up of indivisible mathematical points. Then Hume says that if extension were infinitely divisible, then both a small and a large line will both have infinitely many points. But we cannot say that there is a greater, lesser or equal quantity of points between two infinities. 
So those who presuppose infinite divisibility cannot say that we compare sizes by counting points. But some say that a yard is made of three feet and that is how we compare sizes, for example. But the question is, how do we know how to make our feet equal so that we may add three together? They say there are 12 inches in each foot. Again, we want to know what makes inches equal. So long as extension is infinitely divisible, there will be no absolute standard for comparisons of size.